Hi, I'm Bryce and welcome to Making Things. In our last video, we made an awesome water bottle rocket launcher. And this time I have a question about it. How come when we're pumping air into the rocket, it doesn't launch upwards until it has enough pressure to go really high up in the air? As in, how come when I push air into it, it doesn't go up a little bit and then fall over as soon as it's above the cork? Some water bottle rocket launchers have a latch that holds the rocket down in place until it has enough pressure, and then in order to launch it, you release the latch. But this one doesn't have that. So what's going on here? Let's talk forces. If you have two people applying equal forces in opposite directions to something, let's say like a rope in a tug of war, then the rope won't move. No one is winning here. We can say that when we add these two forces together, they equal zero. We say that the forces are in equilibrium. A force is any push or pull. There can be loads of different forces being applied to an object, and that's okay. We just add them all up. But if the force in any one direction is stronger, the sum of all forces won't be zero, and the rope will accelerate. It'll move. The same is true for our rocket. Before the rocket launches, it has the force of gravity pushing down, and the force of the launcher pushing back up against the rocket. We call that the normal force, which affects the force of friction, which we'll get to in a minute. The rocket isn't going up into the air, and it isn't falling into the ground, so we know that the forces must add up to zero. Great! Also, the cork is really wedged into the neck of the bottle, so it's pushing out. But the bottle is pushing right back with its own normal force on the cork. The cork isn't exploding out of the bottle, and the bottle isn't crushing the cork. So, we know they sum to zero as well. Now let's look at the rocket right after it started to move, but before it leaves the cork. The force of gravity is the same, but now the upward force comes from the pressurized gas inside the bottle, pushing down through the surface of the water and onto the cork. The force is greater than gravity in the opposite direction, so it moves upwards. But that's not everything. As the mouth of the bottle slides over the cork, the surfaces slide alongside each other. On a microscopic level, these surfaces are bumpy and jagged and push against each other as it moves. They even form weak bonds between their outermost molecules, holding the surfaces together. This resists motion, applying a force in the opposite direction to the direction that the rocket is traveling in, but not enough to keep it from moving. We call this friction, or more specifically, kinetic friction. But kinetic friction isn't the only friction in town. If you walk up to a shipping container full of bowling balls and start shoving, it's not going to go anywhere, unless you're Superman. It's being held in place by friction. And since it's not moving, we call it static friction. And if you push even harder, it still won't move. But remember, if it's not moving, that means the forces must sum to zero. So if you're pushing harder, that means the frictional force must be getting stronger too. Otherwise, it would be moving. But this won't last forever. If you keep applying more force, eventually it will start to move. Let's say you get a hold of Superman, and he starts shoving the container. As he increases his force from zero, the force of static friction also increases in the opposite direction, until eventually you reach a point where it starts moving. We call that point the maximum static force of friction. So until you push up to that maximum static force, the object won't move. But as soon as you push a little bit harder, it'll start accelerating and the force of friction will become its constant value of kinetic friction. But look, the force of kinetic friction is less than the maximum static friction. Now let's get back to our rocket. As we're pumping it up, the force of static friction between the mouth of the bottle and the cork increases as we apply more force from the pressurized air. But once the rocket starts to slip along the cork, the frictional force between the bottle and the cork drops from the high value of the maximum static friction down to the much lower constant kinetic friction. But the gases in the rocket are still pushing with the same force as before, which is plenty more than the frictional force and gravity combined. So the rocket goes up and up and up. So now that you know a little bit more about how our rocket launchers work, you can watch our previous video to see how to build one. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see all of our videos as they come out. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Stick this bottle on this cork here in this PVC frame. If we pump it up, it'll launch it, which we won't do inside. Cool. <laughs> cool. Let's get started.